I saw my first snake when I was three and caught my first snake when I was four. And I've just been in love with them ever since. What drives me is just simple childlike curiosity. What gives me the greatest thrill is just discovering something new about the animals that I love. I love the snakes, but they don't love me. Der Biologe und Biochemiker Dr. Brian Fry jagt im australischen Outback die gefährlichste Schlange der Welt, den Taipan. Brian erforscht die Wirkung des Schlangengiftes und nutzt es für die Entwicklung neuer Medikamente. What I do, the very key to the scientific success I've had is that I go out and I actually catch all of the animals that I work on. I can just spend 10 months of the year traveling and collecting snakes, going out and living where the animals live. And this allows me to find those very unique venoms. But of course it's fun, you know, I'm, what I'm doing is what I love. First time I caught a taipan was probably as close to a religious experience as I'm ever going to come. This was, this is an iconic animal. This is the holy grail of venomous snakes. It's the world's most dangerous snake, but it's also such a beautiful and magnificent creature that the first time I had one, I was just, I couldn't stop shaking. Not of fear, but just excitement and happiness, just. Bei seiner Arbeit kann sich Brian nur auf seinen Instinkt und seine Erfahrung verlassen. Das ist sein einziger Schutz. The taipans are extraordinarily active snakes. They go out and they seek their prey. Some snakes just sit there and wait and wait and wait, they might sit in the same spot for days or even weeks, waiting for a prey item to come by and then bang, they'll get it. But the taipans go out and they look 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 and then bang. With going after something like a taipan, you need to be very, very fast. And so your best protection is your understanding of the animal, of how are they going to move. So you can start having a little bit of prediction. It becomes at times almost like an athletic event where you have if you understand your opponent it gives you just that little bit of an edge sometimes nach möglichkeit melkt brian die schlange sofort um sie danach direkt wieder freilassen zu können the fangs of the snakes are like hollow hypodermic syringes so imagine that you've got a thin very sharp needle but it's hollow in the inside that then connects up to a duct like a hose that leads to this muscular venom gland here. So the gland squeezes, which forces the venom through the tube and then out the fang. One of the things that happens with the taipan bite is that your blood pressure will drop very, very quickly. And then this will rapidly lead to unconsciousness. Now, if you're bitten in your leg, it won't happen as fast as if you're bitten on your trunk or on your neck, but it will happen eventually. And that's one of the ways that you can actually tell how a venom might be useful is that if something like that is happening and you can find the compound that's doing that, that's something you can actually develop into a medicine, something to lower your blood pressure. Like if someone's having congestive heart failure, their blood pressure is very, very high. You want to lower it. So that's what we've done is that we used the fact that victims have this effect. So we went searching in the venom for what was causing that effect. And we found it, isolated it. Now we've developed it into a medicine. Für die Analyse des Giftes muss Brian in sein Labor nach Melbourne zurückkehren. Das wird ihn aber nicht davon abhalten, bald wieder auf die Jagd zu gehen. I'm a biologist, but I also have a PhD in biochemistry. So I understand the very hardcore laboratory side of it, but I also understand the evolution. So I'm able to go across a divide that normally isn't straddled. We're barely scratching the surface of venoms. We know so little about the tremendous diversity of out there and what we can use it for.